Oh. Welcome back to the Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison, where we just talk, where we're talking sports and life. Got a very special guest next here. We have an emotional and intelligent body coach, Miss Tiffany Mass. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Travis. It's an honor. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. I'm excited, too, because this is things I definitely um, want to know about, and I'm pretty sure a lot of our guests may learn a thing or two. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's important now, and especially for what we're going through in this world, everything mm -hmm. that's happening, that mm -hmm. the mental health yeah. aspect is, is huge mm -hmm. at this moment. So mm -hmm. what made you go down that path to be a body coach, you know, dealing with emotional intelligence? And you gotta, I, you have to tell me what's the somatic, that whole yeah. aspect. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so somatic just means of the body. Uh, so it's learning how to sense more of the world, be more in relationship to yourself through your body. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute to like go through, but how I started out was um, I was actually raised by my grandmother, uh, who like in a small town, Hickory, North Carolina, and I went through a series of uh, like so many life experiences I've been through just about every trauma you can imagine and my grandmother raised me in my faith and so despite all of those uh, like experiences that most people would be like oh my gosh I wish I never had that um, I've been able to see throughout my lifetime without giving all the details right now how God used the deepest pains in my life where I thought my entire world um, was broken apart and the foundation was ripped away to actually like alchemize things within me that needed to be created so I could be the gift to the world that he needed me to be for other people so that they can see that you can have awful things occur to you and there's still hope and magic and you can still reconnect with who you are as a human and reconnect with God's calling for your life. Um, so that's kind of, you know, over a series of events that led me to that. About six years ago, I had one of my best friends introduced me to one of her friends that was certified in an emotional intelligence assessment tool. And really emotional intelligence is about being aware of like what's happening within you first. And then that allows you to be in better relationship with other people in the world. And so this tool shows essentially your like what we learn when we're children, how to be safe and survive in relationship. So like what emotions are okay versus not okay to express. Um, you know, like, when do I speak up versus not? Where do I place my trust and how much? And that just really shifted me because um, we all have blind spots. And we learn, when we learn how to be safe and survive in relationship, um, we think that is the way that we have to continue to be for our whole lives. And that's just not true. Like, God wants to continue to, like, expand and grow us and expand our perspectives. Um, and so since that point, I've just continued to expand and grow. And then I got certified as an ontological coach. Uh, ontology just means the study of being. So understanding how I'm showing up as the, in the world as a unique observer through my body, my language, and my emotions. Um, and then creating more alignment within that as I show up. And so um, I think, you know, that's how I got to where I am now. That's interesting. And, and you know, I mean, people don't just... They don't grow up and say that's what I want to do. That's no. like, you, like you said. That's it's a, it's, it's a calling. It's a, it's, it's a calling. You know, a lot of people don't get their calling. You know, sometimes, like you said, you went through things in your life um, that these things helped you overcome. So you're you're basically going back and helping other people overcome their hurdles or their mm -hmm. difficulties or battles in their yeah. life. Um, and like you said, this is something God want us to do you know I think a lot of times we go through things and we kind of we get over them and we kind of keep moving instead of mm. going back and helping other people mm -hmm. which I think is it's key it's like the t it's a testimony you know so oh, yeah. it's like sharing the testimony but now mm. you are showing people um a way that they can get through just like how you did yeah you know um well can I offer a thought yeah. so you said um like you don't just get to your calling and I just came back from a retreat that I st it's really an experience. I don't have words for it. It was all God. One of the things that we learned there is we're, we've always been in our calling. So even when I was going through, like at 10, some really intense trauma that a 10-year-old shouldn't be in and then witnessing other things 
I was in my calling in that moment and God knew that he was going to use that experience and use the meaning that I made of that experience um, to like build on my whole life up until this point. And he's going to, and same for you, like we've always been in it. And it's a matter of now I'm intentionally stepping into every day saying, okay, I know you're going to use every moment of every day for my calling. And the cool thing is we don't have like the calling doesn't mean one road. Like the calling means he's going to cultivate a myriad of gifts within all of us. And we get to say, are we going to be accountable to being intentional in how we show up in life and show up for him? Mm -hmm. And then when we do that, he just, you've experienced that he just begins to like open all the doors. And so I originally wanted to be in healthcare. I wanted to be an anesthesiologist and go do mission work in Africa and third world countries. And I (laughs) did not do that. But now after this retreat, I'm still going to be working in Africa and third world countries, but with a different set of gifts to be able to go in those spaces to show these other cultures and, you know, like help get translators to say, okay, so how do we teach these skills to other people too? Because it's not just for us like here in America. Right. Absolutely. I think that's very commendable. Um, I think it takes a... um, I don't want to say confident, but it takes a person that's um, that's living for God in the sense of like that know what they sh- want to do in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times we don't know. So how how do you become more aware? Like I know you talk about a lot about your body, knowing your body, but a lot of times people, like even myself, we had conversation in regards to knowing yourself. You know, yeah. certain things trigger you, or you know, you're feeling this way. You may not know why, or you're mm-hmm. going through stuff. How can someone become more aware of their body and the needs of that body, whether it's mentally or just... Yeah, I love this question. So um, the beautiful part is there's so many tools out there. I'll offer maybe one or two things here. Um, The first thing is an analogy that I learned from one of my favorite mentors. Uh, So envision a cheeseburger. So if we were to put a cheeseburger up on the screen and you see like bacon, lettuce, tomato, um, whatever type of cheese, if we were in a room full of people, we would all be looking at that cheeseburger and seeing different things. Like you might look at the meat and be like, I hope that's like bison or like some, I don't know, other type of meat. Whereas someone who's vegetarian may be like, I hope that's a bean burger. Um, and then somebody else may be like zeroed in on bacon or the cheese and it's, you know, and we're all having different emotional reactions. So I might be like super excited if it, if somebody's like vegan or vice versa, they might be repulsed by that. And then, like, the physical response is, I might be drooling. <laughs> um, if somebody's getting, maybe they don't have a good memory around cheeseburgers. And then physically, they they might, like, tighten up and constrict. And so you're probably like, how does a cheeseburger have anything to do with how we show up in life? And it's because we can all be looking at the same image and ha- making completely different meaning out of it having completely different emotional experiences and physical reactions. And that's how we show up as observers in the world. Mm-hmm. In this conversation, the meaning I'm making of this conversation, the experience I'm having is going to be different from you. And it's not that like one of us is more right than the other, because it's not about right, wrong, good or bad. It's about, hey, we're making a set of choices on how we choose to make meaning of what we're experiencing and then learning from that. And I really think that's what like that's how God made us. And so to be aware is to simply first step. Like, can you observe how you're observing the world? Are you aware of when you're in traffic? What is the meaning you're making of if it's super busy and you're like, oh my gosh, like here I am stuck again. Like I'm going to be late, blah, blah, blah. Versus maybe you could step into a new perspective. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this isn't great. I've now learned that I should probably leave like five to 10 minutes early. And so how can I use this time instead of putting energy into like getting frustrated or being annoyed, maybe you turn on like your favorite gospel song that's inspiring you or you're listening to a podcast Mm -hmm. to develop you in some way. And so with, a, I think, thinking of the first step of awareness, it's A, understanding we can be, even in the same family, you can be in the same conversation and the meaning that each one of you is making is completely different. So having the humility and not being so attached to being right about your meaning that you're disconnecting yourself in relationship. So I always tell people, like, are you interested in being right or are you interested in being connected? Right. And, like, obviously there's a caveat if you're in toxic environments. Right. Like, yes, please disconnect by all means. Right. But really it's about how can you hold space not just for 
your perspective of the world, but for mm-hmm. others too. And like that, when you think about Jesus's example in the Bible, that's what he did. Right. He held space. And so we don't get to expand our world if we stay married to the framework from which we've operated in our whole lives. Right. And then I think the other really big part of awareness is what I notice in people and myself is um, people think emotions are like in the way and they're like, I don't want to deal with that. I want to suppress it. And what I want to offer here is that we actually instinct first then we feel, then we think last. And so, and our emotions are just energy in motion. They live in our body. And God actually gifted them to us because they have information and a gift. Again, our emotions are not good or bad. Like your anger is telling you, hey, a value of mine has been violated or I've been violated in some way here. And the gift of anger is saying, oh, this is telling me maybe I need to set a new boundary in communication from a place of love. Maybe I need to get motivation or maybe I need to set a different direction for myself or in a conversation or in a relationship. And so we want to use that. It's like your body giving you signals to say, hey, there's something here that I want to give you information with. So for me, the moment I started observing how I showed up and then I chose to be in relationship with my emotions and be like, oh, they're guests. Like God gave them to me to say, hey, there's a part of you that needs to be healed or a new perspective that needs to be gained to like deepen relationship with yourself and others. Like everything has changed for me, and and that's <clears throat> that's that's huge. I think you said a, a lot of great points. That I mean, you you given a lot of education to people that may not know. Like I know when we spoke, you know, those things. I was like, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. You know, some some people don't know that, and some people, like you said, they go through traumatic things. They go through things, and mm-hmm. they 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 hold it in mm-hmm. and they keep it tight, and then they go through with these relationships with someone else or with jobs or whatever and you kind of they they get triggered easily or yeah. they go or they react a certain way because mm-hmm. it may not have nothing to do with that situation mm-hmm. but it, it's, it's past things that they mm-hmm. held deep down inside and they never spoke to somebody about it mm-hmm. or they never really um took it in and embraced it in regards to like what they've been through like you yeah. said a lot of times people just hold it in and then you say come out and it could be little ways or come be in a major way. Mm-hmm. You see, you know, every time you see, you know, whether it's a killing or some, they was going through something mentally or, you know, they was dealing with something that this last thing was their last straw that they, um, that end up triggering them to basically take them over the edge. Yeah. Can I say something with that? Yes. Yeah. So, um, there's a quote, I can't remember who said it, but suffering is resistance multiplied. And whenever we're suppressing our emotional experience, we're saying, like, I don't have time for that. This is, like, I shouldn't be dealing. Like, don't should all over yourself is what I tell my clients all the time. And God wouldn't say that either. Like, you know, we want to be in the entire range of the human experience, which includes all of our emotions. And and anytime we're suppressing any of that, going to social media, um, like, over-exercising, going to food, we're suppressing our emotional experience in our being. And then we actually... We'll talk about this at some point later, I'm sure, but like though when we suppress things, it gets trapped in our body. So just like you were saying, Travis, it'll come out. It actually, there's research that shows when we suppress, it depresses our system, and you're essentially making yourself numb to life, which is not God's plan for us at all. Like God wants us to be fully alive to life, and with that means sensing every part in our being and being even with the uncomfortable um, emotional experiences and energy because there's something to learn and grow within that space too. And so I just want to offer anything you're suppressing, you're creating suffering within yourself and for others. And you're, you're creating this, uh, like who wants to be numb to life? You know? Exactly. Life is, is beautiful. It's just, I think it becomes, like you said, you see the world whole once you overcome that thing that, that held you in the dark for so long. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, like you said, a lot of times people are scared to face that mm-hmm. traumatic situation because yeah. it was so traumatic. So, yeah. like you said, the instincts of a human being in the flesh is to, all right, no, I, I'm gonna swipe it under the rug, I'm gonna keep it moving. I gotta yeah. keep, I gotta focus somewhere else, whether it's my work or whether it's, you know, this relationship. Like, they find ways to try to not deal with it and keep it in the dark. Yeah, well, I mean, that's how they learn to be safe and survive at that mm-hmm. moment. So when that trauma happens, our body is super smart. So it's like, what do I need to go do to protect myself? And then like you were saying earlier, Travis, then we get to like, now I'm 33, getting ready to be 34. So I might get triggered in a moment now or in a relationship now. And, and my body is thinking it's reliving that experience back then. And so 
the cool part is we can rewire those neural pathways and create a new way of being and we can shorten and recalibrate that instinctual response in the moment in a new way and since we're talking about the emotion so how, what success how do you define success a lot of times people define success whether there's money um uh you know uh, accolades you know mm -hmm. things like that but you also you know you have people that say they were more successful because of the failures that they may have had in the mm -hmm. sense of you know because I missed all these many shots like a Michael Jordan this one shot like that's that's because I kept trying over and over and over again mm -hmm. so to you what is your definition of success mm. So recently it's shifted for me and my definition of success is that uh, like the wealth, you know, I think a lot of people think of wealth in financial terms and that's amazing and you can use wealth to, you know, use God's calling and like bless other people. For me, like the number one thing is relationship, like the real wealth of life is in relationship and it starts first with you because the better and more deeply you're able to be in relationship with all the parts of yourself, like whatever you label good, bad, ugly, then the deeper you're able to be in relationship with others and continue to heal and expand what it means to be human and be in the human experience together. Yeah. And so like, I think about everything that has happened in my life and where I'm at now and the things that I've just experienced, like even this past week and I haven't had the chance to like talk to you about because I just flew in last night, but it's like, I would not, I would not have ended up where I am right now if it wasn't for continuing to be curious about being in relationship with myself and being in relationship with other people in a new way to challenge my belief systems, to hold the fear, hold the parts of me. Cause often I think we think we are feel all of us is feeling fear. Mm -hmm. And it's really just those parts that haven't quite learned that you can be safe and explore the world in a new way. And so, and it's, um, yeah, I'm still sorry. <laughs> this weekend, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. This weekend was just so um, impactful. I went to a retreat on a private island in the British Virgin Islands. And I've like, I've lived in a car. I've lived in a house that was like roach infested with roaches crawling over the bed at like 10 and I couldn't sleep at night. And I think about like all these things I've witnessed and I'm like, God, how did I end up here? And it's because I chose to be in relationship with myself in a new way, despite what I had been through to use, like T.D. Jake says, to use those crushing moments in our lives and, and just trust that God is using it in a way, even if I, as a human, can't envision, like, this is really painful, God. How could you possibly use any of these things? And like this past weekend, it just made sense because I, I wouldn't be there. And it, w and it was because of the relationships that I've cultivated with others. Like by seeing myself, I can then see other people. Right. And then God just uses, real I mean, that's why we're here as humans, is to be in relationship and to explore all the nuances of like what that means and feels like. Absolutely, and that's amazing. And I, I love the way you look at it. And I think if more of us look at it life like that and look at ourselves like that, then life will be People would be better off. Yeah. There would be better situations. There would be better relationships. Yeah. You know, um, but it's just, like you said, it's just about embracing that and not being scared, mm -mm. overcoming that fear. Um, I know there's been things in my life and I'm like, okay, I don't want to deal with them. Going yeah. to, but then, like you said, a lot, of, a lot of things we go through in life make us who we are today. Mm -hmm. and, it, and like you said, it, it's, it kind of sucks that we have to go through it, but it's... We have to go through it, mm -hmm. in a sense, for because God has a bigger plan for us. Oh yeah. So in order for us to get there, we have to go through this, mm -hmm. and then once we get through that, when and but you have some people that can't get through it though. Mm -hmm. You have some people that struggle with it, and they, they mm -hmm. turn to drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. because they want to numb that part mm -hmm. of their brain because they don't want to think about it. I did that. It, I, I did too. For years. <laughs> I did too, and and and, and that's not it's, it's not a good thing. It's just it's a temporary fix. It's a mm -hmm. band-aid. But until we rip that band-aid off and really dive into it and understand that okay, we can get through this. God has something great for us on the other side. But it's 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 for us mm -hmm. that's going through stuff or that's been through stuff or that's overcame things to go back and let them know like, look, I've been where you was. I've been where you're at. <clears throat> let me help you get over that and yeah. you're going to share your story so that's why 
I guess people would say testimony. You giving your testimony because, mm-hmm. and to you when you sit in when you sit out mm-hmm. in the congregation and somebody's up there talking about a situation you're going through, you're like somebody else went through that too. Yeah, like me, like me too. Yeah, so yeah. now, but it takes for somebody to be willing to step on that stage and talk to the congregation and share that story. Mm-hmm. Not of us is scared to do that, you know. Yeah. So, what is some work that can help people overcome that, like somatic release breath work? What like what I'm curious about what that mm-hmm. is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, ex- exp- can you explain that to me and to us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, so I have a couple of different skill sets. One of them that I've incorporated in recently into, like, my different offers that I have um, is called somatic release breath work. So, again, soma being of the body. And um, there are a bunch of different beautiful breath work techniques that you can easily YouTube for free, like free resources. Um, I would offer doing short breath work sessions in the morning really helps clear your mind and set your intention and get you aligned. The specific technique that I learned um, is designed, it's like an hour long. The first half you are breathing in and out through your mouth and there's three rounds, you have two breath holds and then the second half you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. The whole way that that um, this was set up was to help pull up in that first half. Those trapped stressors, those things that we've been suppressing from the time we were born until that moment, um, to help pull them up in our body so our body can release. I don't know if you've ever seen um, our the, the man who certified uh, me showed us a video of a gazelle getting caught by a lion or a cheetah, and you can YouTube this too. You watch the gazelle just freeze. So we all have our, our, um, like our trauma response, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And it freezes, and then the cheetah notices there's like another animal that would like eat the, say it's like a panther or right. something like that. Right. And it pauses, and it goes to like defend off, hey, this is like my snack that I'm going to have. And you watch while the gazelles by itself come out of its freeze response, and it, its whole body shakes. And then it just pops up and goes off, and it's fine. And so that's why I say like we instinct first and we feel, then we think last. And it's because we are taught that when we feel an emotion coming up and we need to like, I mean, you see a kid, if they're upset or if they get hurt, what do they do? They express, (laughs) they express quite well. And, um, and so it's, we're meant to express. Obviously there are some places if we're in the middle of a corporate meeting, we can't just be like, ah. in the middle of the corporate meeting but this container helps create that space to release so that you're not carrying those those limiting belief systems those traumas that stress in your body anymore because trauma trauma is stress it's very subjective so what's trauma for me may not be trauma for you and it's creating that safe container to be able to release that so that you can then in the second half breathe in and reclaim new intentions for yourself and from a science standpoint, you're when you're clearing out all of that just with your breath, mm-hmm. the the second half you have activated um, brain waves to literally rewire your subconscious at a cellular level, and so your body is literally feeling, oh, there's a new possibility of being, and so then the real session happens after the session. That's what my instructor said. Um, and then you walk away getting to integrate that and relive that. And literally, I always say you're building, you know, those like uh, new neural pathways with mm-hmm. baby weights mm-hmm. because you've been living in a certain pattern for so long. And then to begin to step into a new pattern after this, it's like, consciously um, being in the practice. So <clears throat> been, been, been somebody that's been there, been through it, did it, do it yourself. Yeah. What? has this breath work done for your life can you explain a little bit about that but also yeah. tell it how it helped some of your clients yeah so um mm. so i had experienced a lot of shifting with the assessment tool six years ago that i took that i'm now certified in and the coaching i was talking about where you work through body language and emotions with myself and i was noticing that i was able to shift and expand and heal and show up differently in certain ways But then I also was noticing that every next level that I was in, I was still hitting a lot of some of the same roadblocks. And I was like, what is happening? And um, so I started studying more about what does body healing look like? Again, because um, 
we instinct first. And so what I found in my research was that it shows you can intellectually see a different vision for yourself and you can understand, okay, there's a new possibility of showing up, but your body is slower to come along. Like there's science behind that. And so for me, what I've noticed is since I've started breath work, I am literally not carrying that weight of my trauma, of stress, of limiting beliefs in my body any longer. And I am carrying new belief systems. And so with my clients, oh my gosh, I got to hold a, a breathwork session at this retreat on this right. island. And I watched one of the women said she felt like um, it's a very different experience, this breathwork, but it's super beautiful. Uh, she felt like she said she had a noose around her neck. Like she felt a lot of tightness because when you're breathing, you'll feel where you're holding a lot of that trauma and stress. And she said that she kept, because I told them, this is the opportunity to befriend the discomfort in your body because it's going to mirror your ability to befriend the discomfort that shows up in your everyday life and how you move through that. So she kept leaning in and she said she finally felt it release and she didn't realize that she had been addicted and she had watched people in her family, like even I believe her mother, um, have addiction to certain things. And so she literally felt the release of addiction wow. in her body in that in that session and in the second half was able to again with her own breath breathe in a new way of being and then i just watched her start to rep it out wow. through the rest of the retreat and how she's like now i know my purpose is to like serve other people and help them move through addiction and that, that doesn't have to be their story right and now every session isn't like that. For some of my clients, the session is simply about learning to be be in their body for the first time. And it's not like one is better than the other. Both are necessary. Your body knows what it's ready for. And so it's, I think about God breathed life into us. Mm -hmm. Like he gave us the most powerful tool that we have for healing. It's in our breath. Right. And so that's what I'm all about is giving the power back to people because I think we're told for so long you need this person or this coach or whatever. And my goal is when people come in, I want to equip you with everything so that you know you've always had the power in you. Right. I think, <clears throat> like I said, I know when we talked before, I said, dang, I wish I would have had this when I was doing that. Right. Or I wish I would have had this when I was an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that, uh, I, think it's, I think it's a necessity and I think it's definitely needed. But for sure, um, I know you guys at home, you know, would love to know, want to know more. Yeah. Um, you definitely can, you have a, a website or? Yeah, createawarenesscoaching.com. Feel free to email me. It's createawarenesscoaching at gmail.com. And then Instagram is how I function mostly right now. So just tiffmast, T-I-F-F-M-A-S-T. Thank you so much for being here yeah, on you. the Cross of the Talk Show. We talk yeah. sports and life. For more information about our guests, go to the crossovertalkshow.com. And you can find all the information about Miss Tiffany Mass, Mr. Rodney uh, Grant. Uh, definitely tune in next time. We have more great guests to come. But thanks for tuning in to the Crossover Talk Show.